Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Jeremy here with Hilt's Machine Works in Maine. And I am uh, in the process of tooling up this Logan 6560 a little bit better for my shop. And uh, I had ordered a faceplate, a really nice 12-inch uh, faceplate and um, off of eBay. And I got this drive plate with a smaller Logan lay that I picked up, this 922 that I'm in the process of cleaning up and painting. And um, if you have a Logan lathe, you should probably take note of this because I'm going to have to modify each one of these to fit. And if you get a uh, chuck with a semi-finished uh, backing plate, you're going to have to modify that as well to fit the Logan spindle. And the reason for that is uh, this is a two and a quarter eight spindle thread, um, similar to what was used on South Bend's, the spindle. Um, but... On this Logan, this area here is slightly larger in diameter than what you would expect on a two and a quarter eight spindle thread. And they probably did that to kind of have a proprietary thing where you, you'd order chucks and stuff from them. Um, you know, they a lot of these older lays, they have, like this one, you have to have a an adapter to use your Morse taper in the spindle. South Bend is the same way. There's a, you know, that's just, in that era, that's what they were doing. And so what I've done is I've miked this here, this diameter, and found that it is 2.286. The faceplate is only 2.278 in this diameter. So the dry plate is a little bit smaller even, 2.272 here. And if you don't machine these out a little bit to open that up, what happens is the face plate or the dry plate or the chuck, it'll bump up against the, this here and it won't fully engage. So you're not seated all the way on to the uh, spindle. And I'll demonstrate that now. I'm gonna put on this face plate and you can see that it does not fully seat. Okay, I've just started the thread. I'm not going to ram it right up against it because I know it's going to hit. Okay, see? It's starting to get snug. And what we have now is this shoulder should be right up flush against the spindle in there. Right up against it. But it doesn't. But I've seen many Logan Lays running with the gap here because it's not seated. And that's because they bought just a chuck off eBay or something, or they had an old one laying down from another machine, and it was, oh, it's two and a quarter eight, I'm gonna send it, and they put it on, and it's actually not even fully seated on the machine. Could be a big problem. Now on this one also, look at the amount of, I don't really have hardly any thread engagement here um, because of the, we'll see when I take the faceplate off. So I wanna have more engagement here, I'm not happy with this. Even if I open up the bore here and it can thread on a little further, I know I'm just not going to be happy, and I'll show you why. You can see here that this depth is pretty substantial on the faceplate, and because of that, whereas the Logan spindle has a much smaller shoulder there in length than what this has, whatever lathe this came off of, it doesn't really get the thread engagement that I want. So what I'm gonna do is, while I have this set up in the mill, uh, I'm gonna open up this bore, and I'm also gonna face off material here using my wall hopter boring and facing head so that I'll have more engagement of the threads um, at the spindle. Now this um, drive plate doesn't have that problem because you see it's very small. So this one, I'm gonna leave it, I'm just going to open this up, open the bore up there so that it can clear the shoulder here and fully seat. And before I do that on this one, I won't show it on the video. I'm just gonna hit this on my lapping plate so that when it's on the uh, Bridgeport table, it's gonna be all nice and clean on the bottom side. And I should have mentioned that the reason I hit that on the lapping plate is not only to make sure that anything I do to the top is parallel, but obviously also so that any work I do in the bore is square to the face. So that's the reason I did that. This, I just lightly stoned it. It didn't have any imperfections on the face, but I did stone it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and strap these down and dial them in. 
and we'll be ready to go. So what I got here is I dialed this in to within a half thousandths and I've checked up and down the bore. The bore is not perfectly concentric, so I split the difference a little bit, but I got it within a half thou of, of what I'm happy with. Same thing with this one. And what I've done is I set my readout here. The zero on the drive plate is under incremental and zero of the face plate is under the absolute reading. So that way I can bounce back and forth. And I will say, while I have this set up here, normally I don't work at such an extreme end of the table. You know, I, I like things to be kind of more centered like the, uh, the face plate. Since the face plate's so much heavier, I put it in the center where I'll be working on that. The drive plate, of course, you know, it's, it's not good that it's all this far over, but in my opinion, it's gonna be fine. It's acceptable, it's lighter weight. I know this is gonna be kind of pulling at the table a little bit, but uh, I'd rather have, I think I'd rather do it this way. And also, um, you know, for being a dry plate, it's not, I'm never gonna mount anything to this. This is gonna just be used for a laid dog. And uh, I'm not as concerned with it being absolutely perfectly square, uh, just doing the relief part. Uh, I'm not gonna be facing this one off, so I'm not worried about parallelism really. I'm just opening the bore and I'm content to run it this way. All right, I've got the wall hopter boring head in. It's actually boring in facing head, not my zero. And I'm ready to take this cut. I'm gonna be taking about nine thousandths per side, which will open it up 18 thousandths, which will give me about five thousandths clearance or two and a half thousandths per side. So here we go. I like the way that came out and we're gonna move over and do the faceplate now all right I've moved the machine over and we we're set up on the faceplate we're going to make the same cut that we did I still have the wall hopper set to that diameter we're gonna send her down through like that finish I'm getting in there. Looks good. Happy with it. What I'm doing is I'm using layout fluid, some dicum in there. And I'm just bringing it right up to where the thread begins. And not being too fussy with it, just doing it by eye. Just providing that clearance right up to the thread. And then we're gonna face off the top here momentarily. Again, I like the way that looks in there. Looks sharp. So here's the cool thing about the wall, wall hopter facing head. Not only can it bore, it also faces out at about 2,000 per rev. So as long as I hold this little bar, and I have the spindle on, we're gonna see it advance out and begin to face off this top. Right now, I'm just doing 15,000 to see how it likes that pass. Is that pretty cool or what? You've probably seen boring heads. You may not be familiar with this style of facing head.
you can see it leaves a really nice finish in there. It's just an awesome tool. All right, I've got the faceplate installed. Seats right up. Uh, sits on there real nice. Had a little bit of run out that actually, when I put it on the surface plate, it was the result of the, the face of the faceplate itself. So now I'm just gonna skim cut this thing, taking about six hours to saw off just to make sure it totally cleans. And then she'll be ready to go. Hope you enjoyed the video.